Sure, let's see if this works better. And give it a moment, we'll see if this works. It should be connecting to the service. Okay, so it looked like this workaround works. So let's, let me post this in. Okay, so the one that's QQ. Yep, there we go. You see the stream there? Yep. All right, I'm going to email this to myself. And then I'm going to post that out. I'm going to go to Reddit because I also posted there, and then we will get started once I post this. Yeah, I'm gonna post something else first. <laughs> Do you want to talk a little bit about what you're doing while I correct these URLs? Right after I post this, I will. Okay. Well, then what I will do is I will narrate a bit. So apologies for a little bit of a delay there. Uh, as some of you hopefully are hearing now, we switched to a backup stream uh, due to some technical difficulties. But welcome. And my name is John McMaster. And we will be talking about extracting firmware from a CH340 USB serial adapter. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and what your interest in this part is? Yeah, uh, I'm Ryan Quartino. Um, I recently got into IC reverse engineering a couple months back, uh, thanks to John guiding me through the way. I uh, had got an Arduino Nano from one of my projects that I wanted to decap, and I decapped this uh, USB to UART serial chip. And uh, once I decapped the chip, there wasn't much on the uh, on the metal layer surface, so I decided to delayer uh, to the substrate or active component layer using hydrochloric acid. Um, after about two hours, I got this image uh, at 20x, and I discovered in the top right corner that there was ROM constants. So today we are going to be extracting bits from these uh, these images. Nice, sounds good. So, what is the first process in extracting those bits then? So what I'm assuming we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna use this tool called uh, Rompar and get it onto our Ubuntu VM, which we had just done. And we're gonna to have to open up this image using Rompar and we're pretty much gonna to have to have the program align like matrix style, what's a one, what's a zero, and then pretty much automate the rest if I'm not mistaken. I've never used Rompar before, but today's gonna be a big learning lesson on that. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. So the first step is just kind of convert these high level transistor uh, layout and, you know, kind of the sequence of one and zeros. And then we can translate that uh, physical layout into firmware once we get that. Now, we also mentioned ROMPAR. There was another tool that you had mentioned earlier. Do you remember the name of that other tool? Bitstrapped. Yeah, so that's Chris Gerlinski's tool. And do you, do you know by chance why you might use one versus the other? I don't know much about any of these tools, to be honest. <laughs> Basically, what I would say it boils down to is Bitrack is more of a C++ tool, and ROMPAR is more of a Python tool. So, you know, if you find you need to add some special features, you know, to improve the matching and stuff, um, if you want to tweak the tool, you're going to probably just choose your tool based on whatever language you're most comfortable working in. Since I happen to be most comfortable in Python, I've been recommending ROMPAR. But if you really like C++, Bitracked might be a better uh, match for you. Yeah, so today we're going to be using obviously the Python version because well, Python's a lot more friendly. Yep. Okay, so it looks like you have the image there. 
Can you go ahead and place that in a ROMPAR directory if you haven't done so already? there. Okay, great. So if you now do, you know, rompar.py dash h, I think you'll see that it wants an image file name. And maybe that's it right now. Let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, so there's also this thing about calls per group and rows per group. I'm trying to remember if we made that mandatory, but um, why don't you try to see if it'll first just load with the image? And if not, we can add those parameters on. Okay, so it does require it. So why don't you bring up the image then and I will explain what that's asking about. So a little bit do you, what's that? Let me zoom out a little bit or is this good? I think that's fine. So you see, as you're looking over this, and man, I don't know if I have a good way to indicate on your image, but basically you see how there's kind of columns where it's repeating in a certain unit, right? Mm -hmm. That, uh, gosh, yeah, I don't know how many bits that is. It's like every one, two, three, four, five, six. Ten. I don't know, it's like every 16 bits or something, you know, on the X and, you know, something like that on the Y maybe as well. You see like at the bottom of your mouse is, you know, it's kind of a divider there, right? Yep. Yeah, and so basically what it's saying is, what is the smallest regular and repeated pattern that you have in your ROM? You know, something that you can lay out in a grid pattern. And so what you need to do is maybe even zoom in a little bit more now, if you can, and start looking at some of those bits there, especially some of the higher contrast ones. And answer the question is, are they actually on a grid to give high quality matches? And I'm actually gonna say no, and the reason why I'm going to say no is because, you know, between the two rows, the bits are actually relatively close together. And then there's kind of a dead zone in the middle, right? Yeah. So there's a couple of ways we could model this then if we want to have like rows for matching. We could model each row individually, or you might be able to model pairs of rows. And in fact, for a lot of the extractions I've done, I think I've done pairs of rows. And it looks like you can do that here. Uh, so where your mouse is, for example, right? There's one row that's above it and one that's below it. And you know, they're kind of separated by those dots, right? Yep. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Would you consider this eleven? No, that's probably like a uh, power rail or something like that. I don't think that's part of the actual binary. Okay. So then I'll say one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Uh, so you're skipping some of the bits there. So if you, uh, man, I think what I can do is let me see if I can also share a screen. And then uh, I'll have going... to stop sharing on Zoom for you to share. So let me stop sharing so you can share. I think it actually allows multiple to share. Does it do that, that, that Yeah, I think so. Uh, so give me a second. I'm going to pull it up. And so I can indicate a little bit clearer over here. Oh, so there is a question. Yes, so we did get this image from the microscope. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that process? Yeah, so I used the uh, Amscope metallurgical microscope. Um, the objective lens I used was 20x, and I believe the numerical aperture on the 20x is 0.4. Um, and what I did, I took about 30 or so, actually, I would say about 40 images of the entire chip and stitched them together using a program called ICE. It's from uh, Microsoft. It works really, really well with overlapping images up to a certain point. Um, when you start to have uh, images that uh, overlapping images that look exactly alike, it gets a little more complicated and you have to do some sort of serpentine order stitching, which ICE does support. But there are better tools out there than I feel for serpentine order imaging and stitching. Now, on the stitching note, one thing I would also say, it looks like it may not be an issue for your image set, 
but sometimes, especially since bits can be difficult to stitch, sometimes it's also useful to only stitch the bit area. It'll give you a little bit higher quality stitch results. Because as we're gonna see, if you have any misalignment in the stitching and imaging here, it can make recovery really difficult. Yeah. Okay, so let's take this as an example. So I would say that this is some sort of NOR ROM. And let's start with that maybe just a little bit of background. So the way that this ROM probably works is these are kind of the transistors here. Well, you can see my mouse pointer, I'm assuming, right? I have to stop sharing for me to see yours. Okay, I can see you. Okay. Yeah. And then hopefully people on the stream can see mine. And so what these are, basically, these are the this is the transistor layer here. And normally there's polysilicon that would be running across this way. And where the polysilicon uh, you know, crosses these transistors, I'm sorry, I should say this way, sorry, the polysilicon running this way. And where the polysilicon is running, so like if you can see, yeah, I guess I can just indicate with my mouse, this is where the transistor would form. And that would be the so-called uh, word line. So what you're doing is as you activate the polysilicon going down here, that is gonna activate a word. And then there's gonna be metal or something like that going this way. And that's gonna connect to something like, you know, maybe the power going here to the various bits as they flow from left to right. And sometimes you have a transistor, sometimes not. So it looks like maybe, uh, maybe here, this is a transistor, you know, maybe here not, you can see there's a little difference. And the point is that sometimes there's a transistor that can be activated and bridge that current and make it flow, and sometimes not. And that's gonna determine whether it's a one or a zero, depending where we have that. Anyways, so with that in mind, um, it looks like the way that this is laid out, that these are the individual transistors here, and they tend to be paired. So like there's one here, there's one here, one here. And I would say that the pitch between like this location and this location, and this location, if that is even, we can make some assumptions uh, about the grid, which are maybe a little bit easier when we're laying it out in ROMPAR. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy a screenshot and I'm just gonna try to do some really quick and dirty uh, measurements just to, to see what this pitch looks like. Now, is it common uh, for chips like this to be one bit per one transistor or is it one bit per two transistors? Yeah, so for most things that you're gonna see, it's gonna be one bit per transistor. If you get into certain memory technologies like flash memory, you start getting so th such things called like MLC or TLC. You know, that's where you start getting more than one bit per cell, but you really don't get that in something like a mask ROM, at least that I've seen today. And the transistors also used in, in ROM and mass ROM, are they uh, NMOS, considered NMOS transistors? So it's going to depend on the specific technology. I couldn't say off the top of my head specifically. I will say though that the two most common types that you'll get are uh, implant or active type transistors. And these are active type. Uh, you know, they're just like the other transistors on the die. They didn't use a special implant process just based on the pattern that's on here. After that, I couldn't tell you specifically uh, what they were doing as far as NRP. If you really wanted to, you could do some staining or something like that to uh, try to more accurately figure that out. But uh, yeah, it, and I also I should also mention that for the purposes of just extracting the data, it doesn't matter too much whether they're NRP. We just need to figure out if something's different than something else. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So a couple of things, um, I guess I didn't draw this one up here very regularly. I think though that these rows here are a little bit closer, maybe like the pitch is not quite even. I don't know if you think that that's a completely nice grid or well, we might be able to force it to one. Do you see what I'm trying to look at here? Like is the pitch between these lines the same as these lines. I feel like this is a little bit wider here. Yeah, I was gonna say the bottom one looks like it's a little bit, it's gonna need to be a little bit wider and actually higher as well, it looks. Um, so the other thing I'm noticing too is this is not completely even. So it looks like there's a slight tilt here. So see how we go from here down to here a little bit. Yep. Uh, I think though, for the purpose of illustration, I think this is what I'm gonna suggest is we're gonna start with a section of this ROM as kind of an educational exercise. And then maybe you can go later back and do the full ROM afterwards. 
Does that sound like a good thing? So what I'm going to suggest is once you crop out an area that's pretty good contrast, like maybe this corner down here or something like that, can okay. we start by doing that? Yep. I screenshot the area is better I crop it out. Uh, you know, I don't think it matters too much. I would say though that if you screenshot it, it as long, I didn't check, do you have a high, high DPI? So you notice on mine, for example, these lines here. So yep. this is a high DPI artifact. There's like a known bug on this. Um, it's not ideal if you get that in your image, but you know, I think for our purposes right now, well, it's not a big deal. Would you rather me do the top layer or the bottom layer, uh, bottom of, or say bottom section of the ROM? Just find an area that has really good contrast. So what I mean, for example, is this area up here does yep. not have good contrast. It got some damage here. This is probably from having metalization nearby, which causes the silicon to be etched. And so I think and that's I think why that's you lost. And I was reusing the hydrofluoric acid. Yeah. No. So if you mind that a little bit more, you should get a bit sharper. But for our educational purposes, I think something like this down here seems pretty even. And so I think this is good for, okay. for us right now. Now, in terms of actually counting the bits, as we go across, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 bits across. So there was that question earlier about, you know, like how many columns, how many rows, I think it was saying. It looks to me like there are 16 columns if we consider this our basic group right here. And then the next thing we have to do is figure out how many rows there are. And it looks like we have, um, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Is that correct? Yes, yeah. so I think we have something like 14 rows and 16 columns. All right, uh, I'll screen share and I'll show you the screenshot that I got. Sure. And maybe what I can do is I will stop and we will switch over to you. How does this look? So I can't see yours, so I'm gonna stop and let's see if that helps. I would say even just go for the very lower left, just for educational purposes. Let's literally do just that lower left area. Uh, so this area right here? Yeah, just shrink it down to just that area. All right, uh, I don't think I can crop using that tool in Linux, so I'm going to crop this. So you want to get from here, this little area right here, right? Uh, yeah, do that. Okay. So uh, if you have Eye of Gnome, it should let you, oh yeah, you got something it looks like. And how long does this process usually take you since I'm sure you're very experienced with this, generally it's, it's higher ROM. Yeah, so a few things. First of all, it depends on the quality of your images. So your images, for example, because they're noisy, if you try to do this, the whole thing, like, you know, as a serious project, what you're probably going to find is that because of the variation in the image quality, you're going to get a lot of bits initially, but then a lot of other bits are going to be really noisy and hard for the computer vision to process. So you're probably going to get a lot of them automatically, and then you're going to have to fix a lot of errors if you wanted to get the whole ROM. Uh, for yours, I don't know. I'm going to say a couple hours maybe to get the initial ones and zeros would be my guess. Okay. All right. So this is the new image that I have. Perfect. Perfect. There's a little bit of lag on the YouTube, so I think it takes like five seconds every time I actually do something different. <laughs> oh no. Because I'm looking at it through another computer just to see like the timing. It looks like it's a five second delay. Yeah, that's fine. As long as you know we keep watching for questions, you know, we can catch up and take a look. Okay, so we, can you move that and save it in the ROMPAR directory? Maybe without spaces, just because I don't trust the tool. <laughs> yeah, I was actually just moving the image to different thing. And I think I've only worked with JPEGs. PNGs might work, but just be aware that like, if it blows up, I'm not going to be too surprised. I can always change it back to.
All right, cool. So we have our image. Okay, and let's bring up that help once again. And if you're able to bring up that image for reference, I think it would also help oh, to yeah. understand this bit. Yes, we'll do that. Uh, okay. So did you, first of all, let's start with this. Did you understand my bit? Uh, sorry, not bit, haha. <laughs> did you understand what I was saying about how many columns there were earlier? You said something about 14 by 16, I believe. Yeah, so first thing I was trying to figure out is how many columns there are. And if I count, you know, how many changes we have left or right, it looks to me like 16. So why don't you take a look at that first and see if that sounds correct to you. So this one looks like it's seven. If I go one, two, three, four. Oh, oh you're talking about, I was looking at rows, sorry, even columns. Okay, so one, Yeah, let's start with columns. I think columns are a lot crisper. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Is this considered one? Yeah, that's one. Because if you look at changes as it goes down. Okay, so 16. I got okay, 16. great. So I should say, first of all, there's the parameters there. You, on ROM part, you notice that there is columns per group and rows per group. Okay. So for calls calls per group then, so that parameter is going to be 16. Okay. Okay. Let's get this going. ROM part, section. And uh, for the argument, does it need dash dash calls or just... Calls per no, group. just just the number. Okay. Oh, it just needs the number. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay, so now we have to figure out rows per group. Now, there's a few options here. Uh, I am going to suggest, especially since this is a small image and stuff, we're just going to say one for this number here for now. And that's basically going to mean that every time we tell it where some bits are, it's just going to make a single row. But if we wanted to, though, for example, we could say two. And what that would do is it would try to group them, uh, you know, so that you know there were pairs of rows that always had the same layout or something like that. So would it technically so, only handle this row right here just because we're giving it one row? Uh, but what we're actually doing is we're giving it a group, and then I believe we can repeat those groups. Okay. So the idea being you kind of tile it out. But since we have a very simple image, let's just do one because I think that'll be easier to work with. Cool. Okay, well, that's a little bit different than I was expecting. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, the demo okay. goes in our favor. So why don't you try converting it to JPEG just because that does worry me a little bit, that PNG bit, if you can do that. <laughs> I mean, you did call it, so. <laughs> Well, I don't know if that's the issue yet, but I'm if it's possible, please zoom in and maximize the terminal and image windows. So a request if we can oh, increase oh, the, yeah. There we go. Enhance, enhance. All right, this is like, you can see this from Mars, I hope. <laughs> well, you have to remember too, some people may be watching this on a cell phone or something like that. So they may not have the same screen. So I would actually zoom that in more if you're able to. More? Okay. Yeah, because I think you have like some like, you know, 180 inch TV or something, right? No, I'm actually on my laptop, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but some people on their cell phones, right? So I think right. bigger is better. How was that? I would keep going, but you know, we can move on. <laughs> I think if I keep going, then it's not going to be able to fit the terminal on my screen. It's fine. I mean, we're not going to be working in the terminal much. Uh, I think the other question is the ROMPAR program, but yeah. Anyways, you got it converted to a JPEG, it looks like. Yep, I already did that. Uh, OSC, you did an MV, so that's going to rename the extension. But is it actually a JPEG or is it a PNG file? Oh, uh, it's still a PNG. Yeah, so why don't you move that back? There, I think that if you install a program called Image Magic, see if you can find that in apt or something, there's a program called Convert, and that might be. Oh, I think I have. Maybe, if you already have that, maybe, if you have Convert, that's probably going to be the quickest way to yep. do it. Perfect. Okay, so just put convert, you know, file name.png, 
you know, file name.jpg and it should just work. Cool. Okay. Headers, just to be positive. Oops. Perfect. Uh, GIF. Okay, yeah. So why don't you try opening it with that file instead? Okay, so there are some menu options there where it says like uh, CV options. Why don't you take a look there and see maybe if we have something selected there. Um, it's kind of strange. Uh, are you by chance able to link me that image somewhere where I also could try troubleshooting that on my side? Yeah, let's see. Um, I can actually email this to you. Sure. Yeah. What's your email? I don't think I've ever emailed you before. Oh, it is John J O H N D, or I could just paste it in the chat, I guess. Oh, yes. I could send it on Twitter. Yeah, chat works fine. Okay. Can find the chat again. Yeah. All right. We are sending you this image right now. Okay, so it looks like I have something from you. So I'm going to give that a try on my side and see if I can reproduce that. Uh, also, while we're waiting um, to talk through, when looking at wrong constants, the ones that are a one and not a zero, these are considered fully formed transistors, correct? And the ones that are a zero are not considered fully formed, like not doped transistors. Uh, so it's kind of an arbitrary convention, what you consider a one versus a zero. What we're going to do is we're going to just going to choose something arbitrarily. And at the end of the process, we're going to have to resolve whether we got that choice correct. Okay, so I have your file now. So I'm going to try to load it like we just did now. Let's see if I get the same thing. Okay, so I did get the same thing. So that is interesting. Let me see if I can figure out what happened there. I guess it might be a good thing that we both got the same error. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, let me see if I can convert it or something of that sort. That is rather strange. Let me try loading one of my existing projects and just make sure that things work in general. Do, 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 do. Okay, so I was able to load up another image and it worked just fine. So now the question is, what was the difference between my and your image? So let me see if I can narrow this down. looks like hmm. 
Mm. Ah, okay. So I figured out there's a display option. Um, I think we need to change the default. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> okay. So if you go under display, okay. it says base image blank original or target. Keep and I th think it was on target. Yeah, mine's on target. Okay, can you try changing that to base and let's see if that shows the original image. I only see blank original and then target. Yeah, yeah. So once you select original. Okay. Oh, that worked. Nice. Okay, so that's we, we just have a display thing there. So let me go back to your display. Okay, so I think we understand what happened there. Uh, so what it was trying to do was it was trying to show you the result of some CV matching. And I think it's just a little bit confusing how it displayed it. But that's fine. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to bring that up on my side then so I can follow along a little more easily. OK. This image. And it sounds like that, yeah, either G JPEG or PNG probably should have worked. Okay, but I do recommend that you have the original image, at least for this part right now. So what you need to do for the next part is you have to define some of the rows and the columns for these groups. And let me see if I can just check real quick just to make sure that I remember how to do this correctly. I'm just gonna try this real quick. And yep, okay. Uh, so it's doing something a little bit different than I was expecting it to. So well, we can start with this. So let me show you roughly what I was trying to do. Uh, if you go and you left click on the leftmost bit column, so just click once in the center of the bit. So a little more to the right where the actual center of the bit is. Yeah, about there. So left click once there. Do you see how like a blue line showed up? Now, unfortunately, that's really faint on your screen. So I don't know how many other people are going to be able to see that. Yeah, I'm looking at the Utes. I, I, I can vaguely see it. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know how many other people are going to see that that well. In any case, I want you to click on the rightmost bit now in that column. So this one right here. Uh, no, no, in the entire column. So the six, that's like the first bit. So now click on the 16th bit. Oh, okay. So right here. Yes. Oh, cool. Okay. So you now see how it started doing a little bit of a matchy thing there? Yep. Yeah. So now you've, you've started forming an actual row for it to be checking. Because now you've, you've defined the pitch by clicking on the left and the right. And I guess you also did a right click, which will start defining the rows. Yep. So, so now that you have the rows and the columns, it's starting to do a match. I would say though that, that uh, the row that you just defined is not exactly on the bits. Uh, so I think there is a way to edit that, although I haven't done that in a while. I would honestly say it may be easier just to close the window and try to do it again instead of trying to figure out how to edit it. Oh, just exit it? Just exit it, just do it again. Because there is a way to edit it, but I haven't done that for a while. So let's just retry this. Okay, so cl left click on the leftmost bit once, and then left click on the rightmost bit once. Okay, so now it's got, it's probably really hard for people to see, but there are 16 vertical blue lines now on there. That looks pretty good, actually. Okay, so then those are roughly aligned on the bits. So now what you want to do is you want to hover onto the actual rows. 
So center where you think like the biggest change between a one and a zero on the rows, not there. That is the center where like the power or something is distrib distributed. You actually want to be on the bits, which are above and below that. This one and this one, right? This was like a one and this is a zero. Um, no, those are the power distribution in the center. So the bits are actually above and below that. Oh, so you see how, see how sometimes there's a U and sometimes there's a not, you know, sometimes there's nothing. So like if you go up, right, a little bit, like there's a light area there, right? Yep. But if you, but if you go to the left of that, there's kind of a void, like there's nothing there. Yeah. That's the, that's the difference between the one and the zero. Oh, so so I, the way it works is it's not this whole component as a whole it's an up and down that considers it a one or a zero so this can be a one and this can be a zero uh maybe i can switch over to mine and i can illustrate a little more concretely so give me a second so hopefully you can see my screen now uh, yep i can see your screen and hopefully others can see it as well and so you see there's a couple of uh, things which are just kind of, you know, it's always filled in here, right? So this is filled in here, uh, you know, this is filled in here. But as we get over here, there'll start being a few gaps, right? You see this? There's like a gap here, a gap here, filled in here, filled in here, right? Yep, I see it. So I'm just going to arbitrarily, I'm going to call these ones. So this would be something like, um, you know, one, one, you know, zero, zero, you know, something like that. One, 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 you know, up here we've got like one, one, zero, one, one, zero, you know, something like that. You know, you have to choose where I'm, I'm just going to call it that whatever is at the same focus level as this substrate here, let's just call that a one. So we have one, one, zero, zero, one, one, and that's where the differences are. This is the actual bit right here. It's nothing to do with this center bit. So what I would say where we have the best contrast is actually on this line right here. Okay. Because if, if it's say a one uh, or whatever you wanna call it, there's gonna be a shadow right here. Whereas on the other bits, there's no shadow right here. And to do a really quick and dirty CVs type thing, I think that's gonna give us our best results to just do a threshold like a white here, you know, is, is a one or a zero, whatever we decide. And you know, a dark here is the other bit. Does okay. that make sense? Yep. And what about the top part of that? Do we ignore the, the top part of that area? Uh, that's, yes. So this is just going to be another set of bits and we're just going to ignore basically everything in the middle. Okay. Oh, so for every row and every single transistor is two sets of bits. Uh, yeah. So I can demonstrate briefly here. Maybe this would be helpful. So what I'm going to do is the same sort of thing that we were doing. And let me see if I, I know this is really risky, but I'm gonna try to change my display. Hopefully this won't blow up the world. And maybe this will also be a little bit easier to see for people. So this is what we were doing before. So we were clicking on, uh, I think we decided the first bits were here. Yep. So I'm gonna left click here and I am going to left click here. So this, I uh, kind of missed there a little bit. Uh, let's do this again. And once again, there is a way to edit it. I just don't feel like sorting that out right now. So let's try this and maybe about there. That looks a little better. And then what I'm gonna do is say, okay, here is where the difference between the one and the zeros, it looks like maybe roughly here is where the maximum contrast is. So I'm gonna right click there and that's gonna define one of the rows. And then we've got another one right here maybe another one you know, here, and we're just gonna keep going down the chip, right clicking on these right here. And this goes back into the way that we defined that group geometry earlier. We could have made this a more interesting group so that I didn't have to click you know, quite as much, but depending on the size of your chip, it might not matter too much. So this is the first state that you should start with is just defining the centers of the rows and columns like this. Does that make sense? Yep. Uh, actually, I'll start doing that right now. Okay. For sure. I'll do the same thing. Okay. So now I go back to where I originally was, but I click this top layer right here, correct? And I and I uh, right click here. 
Oh, so I'm just looking. So they're saying that uh, they're saying just FYI, for some reason, when I did the resolution change, apparently they still have the screen resol They didn't get the zoom in for zoom. Hmm. Uh, I don't know what I can do about that. Do we have a way to zoom in on this? I don't think we do. Actually, you know, we can cheat though. Uh, so I'm going to, I have a suggestion for you. If you are able to rescale your image, so what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to edit your image and I'm just going to like scale it up like obnoxiously large, scale it up obnoxiously large. And I think then if we load that into Rompar, that will hopefully show up larger for people. So I'm going to change the display back now to something. I don't know. I think I had it with this maybe. That looks pretty gnarly. Yeah. Let's try this again. Oops, this is not going to revert. Let me just try doubling it instead. Maybe that's better. I think that's hopefully at least a little better for people. So, yeah, so I don't know if this will help. Okay, so let me try this again. Uh, so just again, I'm going to left click. Uh, we have our first bits right here. So I'm gonna left click here. I'm going to left click here. And then what I was doing is saying, we have a, uh, a row of bits here. So I was gonna center on something like this, center on this, center on this and proceed like this down the image. I would recommend clicking somewhere in the center of the image in general, because that is going to spread any sort of errors you have more evenly ac across the left and the right. The circles? Uh, we're well, asking what's the deal with the circles? Uh, yeah, because for some reason when I do it, um, the circles are not right clicking. Like the circles don't appear when I do a right click on them. Okay, so let me see if I can uh, take a look at that again. Looks double good. Oops. Uh, I have my screen here too, so if you want to. Yeah, I was trying to figure out how to get back. Um, so, yeah, so you said you right clicked, you didn't get the circles? Uh, yeah, so check this. Uh, actually, you know what? Let me just start over. So, if I open this up again. Play to original here. We go to the leftmost bit right here, and then the rightmost here. Perfect. And then now you said click um, right click again, the top one right here, correct? Sure. After you're done the lip, okay, yep. I'm going to right click. See, it, it adds another grid. It didn't have a circle that time. So I thought I saw you had some circles up there earlier though, right? I, did, and I don't know how or why it changed. Okay. Mm, so you should get more grids like that if you left click again. So it's almost implying to me that you are somehow converting right clicks to left clicks, maybe? I'm using control click for, for this one and control click for this one in the VM. So maybe if I do, let's try this. So to clarify, uh, there, there we go. Okay, you got something. Okay. All right. So now I come back below here to this line. Hit that. Hit that. Hit that. 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 And we don't need them perfect, you know. All right, done. Okay, so what the next bit then, what you wanna do 
is we have to kind of do the CV bit of things. Now those, uh, you know, the circles are basically indicating where is it going to start looking for like a threshold detector? Because most of this is just like a very basic threshold detector. Yep. So what you probably want to do is start by going under CV options. Okay. It'll say uh, radius minus or radius plus. Mm -hmm. You want to shrink those or grow those until they look like they're in a pretty decent area. I would say right now they're not in a terrible region. They might be fine for you, but you know you could adjust it there. Right. I mean, and, it looks like if anything, I can shrink it, but I don't know. I think it looks good. Yeah, it may, it may be good enough. You know, it's up to you. And then you see that there's like a bit threshold. Yep. See that? Uh, pixel threshold. You know, those are some of the main parameters that are going to determine whether it thinks something is like a one or a zero. Okay. And so you should be able to start playing with those a bit. And I think you had something that was displaying some binary on there already. Is that correct? Does it have like a little one zero view on there? I don't see a one zero on mine. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can get it. Mode. Um, so yeah, you should be able to go to data edit mode and it should go to that mode. Data edit mode. But I'm not seeing it changing. Um, <laughs> Let me see. Grid binary. People. Um, Let's see. And base image. Tell you what, so if this looks like it is running into problems, another option is I could also bring up a reference image on my side for an already uh, working project. And maybe I could show that as an example of what it could look like. And maybe that could uh, at least show an example on my side. And then hopefully we can go back to your side later if that doesn't work out. Does that sound good? Okay, do you want me to stop sharing them? Uh, why don't you give me a second? I'm going to bring up an example image on my side. So it'll take me just a moment. I think just in the spirit of moving the stream forward. Is there anything I might have clicked wrong that maybe it's not displaying the ones and zeros? Um, I'm not sure. I'm a little bit worried that maybe because we have one, you know, row or something like that, maybe it's doing something weird. I'm not quite sure. Oh, uh, maybe we do have to change the one to the actual row number. I can give that a go while you're doing that to see if that changes anything to change it to the actual row number. Yeah, if you want to try something, it should take me just a second. So it looks like uh, 14 rows, so 16 by 14. Okay, so I have an example project up over here. So I think what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna screen share and we're gonna go over to mine. So I think that'll probably be better for illustrative purposes, okay? All right. And then we can sort this out later. Okay, so you can see my desktop now. Yep. 
Okay, so what I have pulled up here, let me just check to see if there's any questions. Okay, so what you can see here is I have a chip and you can see basically these brighter areas and these lighter areas here. And what's happened is there was a threshold detector that was ran to say, hey, what are these bright areas here? And we're gonna call those ones. And then these darker areas here, we're gonna call zeros. And the way that this was laid out was it's a relatively similar ROM to yours and they're both NOR ROMs and they have the same sort of pair sort of thing going on. You know, these two rows are always paired together. These two rows are always paired together. And then this threshold detector was tuned until we roughly saw all of these either being ones or zeros. And then afterward by hand, someone tweaked these. So what I'm going to do then, just for illustrative purposes, is I'm going to change some of these parameters here. And what that's going to do is that's going to rerun some of the CV detection. So I'm going to do radius plus, And hopefully, if I keep doing this, we will start seeing some of these bit definitions change in a second here. So let me, OK. So maybe I ran it too many times. So you've seen now that the bit definitions have started to change, right? Like it's now all like, oh, these are all zeros now. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna shrink this back down and we are going to, assuming I'm going the right direction now, uh, radius minus, if this will catch up, let's see. Okay, now it's shrinking. And as you see, we start shrinking it. The accuracy starts improving a little bit better, right? So I'm shrinking, I'm shrinking. And obviously we're overlapping these right now and you never wanna be overlapping bits. So this is probably just gonna be inherently messy until at least we start getting them on the individual bits. So now like this, where it looks pretty tight on these, this is about where I would expect the accuracy to be about halfway decent. Maybe something like this. And I'm just gonna keep shrinking it, maybe overfit it. And then maybe we'll start seeing some errors if I do that. Okay, see that? See how like an error started popping up here? Is the blue supposed to be a zero and the green supposed to be a one? Yeah, I think that's the way that this is the convention is that it'll output by default a one for green and blue by zero. But I think that's also configurable. I think there's like this inverted here, which changes that. We no, probably I, should change this menu option to be called like green, you know, one or something like that. Uh, somebody's asking if threshold automatically decided by ROM part tool or do they need to set the threshold? Yeah, so if you look at the menu here, is there is there's two options here. One of them is like an absolute threshold, and the other one I think is a rush a relative threshold or something like that. And I can't remember the exact formula that was used here. I think this was like an Adam Lorry thing, and so he would be a better person to ask or check out the code. But yeah, you can change it here. Uh, if we were to start doing you know Shift M or M though. If I keep, you see how this started changing and I'm gonna slide it back. So what I'm doing now is we're not changing the radius, we're just changing the threshold. You see how the bits are changing there? Yep. I would say something around there looks maybe about the sweet spot to me. It looks like we have bit errors in both directions, uh, but it looks like this is about, I would say maybe about the optimal area, something like this. And you can see as I look over this, like there's a few errors, but like it did a pretty good job, right? Like most of these line up. Would you agree with that? Yep, they look fine. Yeah. And so let's say that we took one though. Let's see if we actually see an error. Do you actually see one that, that really is an error? Uh, I'm sure they are here. So I'm gonna mess up the threshold a little bit more just so we intentionally get some errors. Okay. So see how this one here is now incorrectly marked, right? Yep. So one of the things we also can do is after you you stop messing with the CV stuff, you also can start clicking on these and you actually can force a different bit value. Oh, nice. Do you have to and, right click left click or just click? Uh, left click. Left click, okay. Yeah. Do you have a right mouse? Do you have like a Mac or something? Yeah, I'm using the mouse pad. I'm not actually using the mouse. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Uh, let's just see if there are any questions here. So hopefully that answered that question there. 
yeah, so at this point, you would be able to just kind of click around and, you know, sort out what, you know, any sort of errors, like you're like, okay, you know, these are incorrect now. But yeah, as long as you set those thresholds beforehand, and I would advise you, especially if you start playing with these thresholds, you know, to occasionally save, because if you do run this CV again, and like we have no safeties on this, which maybe we should have something, especially if you start manually editing, uh, if you hit this, it'll wipe out all of your manual edits. So just a word of warning right now, the way that this DD is. DD options will wipe it out, right? What's that? The DD options will wipe it out, you said? Yeah, like if you if you touch any of the CV on here and have it rerun the CV, it will wipe out any manual tweaks you've done because, you know, a rerun CV on the whole thing. I think ideally we should have some like manual override list we've saved or something like that. Uh, but we don't have anything like that today. So just be a little bit cautious there. So now if I go back to my image, if I click on those uh, blue circles, I can change them to ones. Um... Sure. So maybe we could bring up yours. Can you bring up yours? And I want to bring an image for comparison so I know what I'm looking at. Maybe I can also find you a convert uh, command line to make that image larger. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm down for it. Well, it Um, at a quick look, I don't see a way to do it really quickly without really messing with the size. So we may have to just run with this. I suppose I could email, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So you said you're able to click. I see only zero is that a is that a blue and a green it's hard for me to tell it's only, it's only blue you're not able to click on any of them oh no i can't i haven't started i was waiting for you oh oh okay so for example this would be a one so right here is a one so i should probably click this you said left click right yeah the thing i'm a little bit concerned of is i feel that you should oh that did not do it that did not do it. <laughs> so there's that mode yes yeah, so remember there was like a mode on there where it said like define mode versus, um, let me bring it up on my- Oh, course. grid, binary, people, data, that one? Yeah, it's like edit mode, grid edit mode, or data edit mode. So oh, you have you want to, to be in data edit mode at that point. Yeah, you have to be in data edit mode or it's probably not gonna do what you want. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, so let's go back to the leftmost bit. Um, all right. All right, got it. OK. 
Okay. Okay. So now you want me to go to edit mode and then data edit mode. Yes. Okay. So now we can change this one to a one. There we go. All right. There were, okay, great. So my guessing is that the CV thresholding is just so far off right now that it's having trouble doing any sort of automatic detection. Let me see if I can bring it up in mine and tweak the parameters so we get something a little bit nicer. Okay. And if you remember, we got that kind of weird red and black image initially. Yeah. I think that was showing kind of what the CV was thinking. And it may help us narrow down what it was trying to threshold. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, great. Okay, I have something much more usable over here now. So give me just a second. And then I can give you some suggestions. Okay. Do you want me to exit out this image again? Um, why don't you hold off for a second and yeah, this is definitely working better. Okay, so let me take a look at what you have right now and I can tell you what I did on my side. Um, okay, so your grid is fine, right? So I don't think you need to change anything there. So the main thing that I would do to start with is go up to display base image and change it to target, okay? It's not gonna screw it up? No, it won't, it's fine. Okay, okay. so this is gonna show you kind of what the CV bit of it is thinking. Now there is a pixel threshold minimum and there's a typo in the menu, but <laughs> the menu <laughs> says minimum and minimum. We sh if someone wants to open up a pull request on that, go for it. But I'm pretty sure one of those is supposed to be maximum. Uh, 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 yeah, so oh, yeah, I, I, think I, was, yeah, I think I was using <laughs> equals and minus and by tweaking that, uh, I was able to get it. I think I kept hitting minus and oh, you'll see okay. the red. Yeah, you can use the keyboard shortcut. And you'll see that if you keep hitting minus, I mean, you could do it that way too, but it's gonna be quicker to hit minus on the keyboard. You should see that red area start growing. Into the oh, minus. whoa. Yeah. And that gives us something a lot more usable. So now, now if you stop there about, you start seeing a pattern that looks a little bit more like usable bits, right? Yeah. And if we, if we set, where those, you know, those radiuses are and the thresholds, you know, now we start having something a little more usable to start detecting, you know, bits automatically. Yeah. So should I now change the image back to, um, to original or? Yeah, that, that, yeah, it's probably useful at this point because now you have at least kind of a rough idea of where it should be. Yeah, so from here, it would just be about tweaking a lot of the settings, you know, moving those rows and columns around, um, you know, changing what the thresholds are and try to get something that's a little bit better of a baseline. Because this is going to be a zero, not a one. Yeah, whatever your convention is, yeah. I'm going to guess though, before you start, oh yeah, you can, you can do that. Um, that I, wouldn't manu I wouldn't manually tweak the bits yet though. I would try to get the thresholds a little bit better either by repositioning the rows and columns, you know, changing that dilation size, you know, how big that, uh, that window is or something of that sort. Should I do anything with the, with the uh, bit threshold or no? Well, what I'm saying is you have a lot of options there. You can play with those and I, the divisor, I don't remember what that divisor option does. So I'm a little bit hesitant to mess with that myself, but you're, you're welcome to do that. What I would probably do is I would bounce back and forth between mode data edit and mode, uh, you know, image or I'm sorry, uh, display base image. 
original versus target. So I guess D and T or something like that. And I think if you bounce back and forth between those, you should get an idea of what the CV is thinking with your thresholds and get something first where you have like a nice red blob you know, where one of the bits is and a black area where the other bit is. And then, uh, once you, then once you have that, you know, you've got like a really strong, you know, one versus zero signal, then, you know, align your grid onto that and you should get really sharp images. Does that make sense? Yeah, see how it's uh, kind of morphing now. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to find that perfect. And you don't need to get a perfect, you know, you just need to get something in the ballpark. Well, how does this look then? Because this looks like it's forming. Let's see. I'm also trying to remember, I think we had a way to delete rows and stuff on here, but I can't remember how we do that. So I just keep adding more. <laughs> on mine. Um, maybe we don't have that. Yeah. Well, okay, let's maybe take a, uh, take a step back here. So it sounds like there's some specifics you need to work out, but it sounds like you at least have a high level idea of what you need to do. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. So I would probably suggest at this point is there's probably going to be a lot of tweaking, which is probably not as generally interesting. I would maybe just take some time by yourself and, you know, tweak those parameters, you know, get that sample image, you know, to the point where you feel comfortable about it. And if that's working well, you know, run those results by me and then take those same parameters and apply it to the rest of the image. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay, well, with that in mind, I think this is probably a good place to break unless anyone else has any other questions. Let's see if we do from anyone. Uh, if not, then, oh, we got something with slightly lowering that first row help. Yes, and that's that's the bit I was talking about tuning that I think there's a lot of that, you know, especially now that we have better insight into what the CV is doing, we could probably place those rows and columns a little bit more accurately so that it actually lines up kind of where to the centers are of those, you know, red blobs that are gonna indicate where the bits are. Okay, well, if that's it, I think this is probably a good place to take a break. And then maybe what we can do is we can post a follow up and or the project files later so people can play around. Uh, do you mind if I link people to where that source image is if they want to play with it? Of course. Yeah, so let me add that just for reference. So if you want that image to play around with, it can be found here. So I'm going to link this in the chat. And I will try to add that to the video description as well. With that, I will thank you for listening. I hope you learned something. And feel free to reach out if you have any questions. And until next time. Thanks, guys. Bye. And it'll take me a second to terminate the stream. So just stand by.